If you are not a fan of the previous sequel trilogy to Star Wars, you're not alone. A lot of people, myself included, don't actually like the last two movies in the trilogy, those being The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. Mostly because The Force Awakens, even though it was a carbon copy of A New Hope, but it laid out interesting groundwork for it to carry on. And this day and age when you know you you are going to make a trilogy, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, I'm going to have a huge, huge movie-based universe, all you need to look at is the MCU for this. And the MCU is broken down into phases, and each thing is literally thought out for the next 10 years. With Star Wars 2012, they were like, right, okay, we've just bought Lucasfilm for four point something billion dollars, George Lucas was laughing all the way to the bank until he actually saw the completed trilogy. He was like, right, he even gave Disney his laid out sequel trilogy plans. Which, to be honest with you, if they did that, it would have been, oh, it would have been into the stratosphere of the reaction for the, those films. But again, no, Disney, for some unknown reason, they let Ryan Johnson go on and do what he wanted. The Force Awakens laid out quite a lot of good groundwork, like I said, which there wasn't, you know, there was things that could have happened, right, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. You know, Lando could have been Finn's father, or Finn could have been the Jedi and Rey wasn't, but no. They decided to go, right, we're going to completely stop this now and go on from here. And this is what we're going to take a look at now, it's coming from Bounding Into Comics. New rumour details that Dark Ray is the key to removing the Disney Star Wars sequel trilogy from canon. And it's very interesting because they seem now they want to wipe out... Excuse me, just hit the microphone. It seems they want to wipe out the sequel trilogy. A new rumour details how Lucasfilm will remove the Disney sequel trilogy beginning with The Force Awakens from Star Wars canon. The rumour comes from YouTuber Doomcock and is followed up by his previous rumour detailing how there were plans and motions to save Star Wars using the Veil of the Force, a concept introduced in the Star Wars Rebels episode A World Between Worlds. In this new rumour, Doomcock explains that two sources contacted him following his previous video and details that indeed Lucasfilm do plan on using the Veil of the Force to save Star Wars. He explains, Lucasfilm is preparing to render the sequel trilogy null and void. The events of The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker will be removed from canon and isolated in their own alternate timeline and regarded as Elseworlds-like installments under the label of Star Wars Legends. Doomcock then goes into detail on how Lucasfilm will use the Veil of the Force to render the sequel trilogy null and void. He prefaces the rumour by stating, As is always the case, this information comes from inside Disney or Lucasfilm, and given that I cannot independently verify this information, I must ask you to regard it as unverified and take it with a grain of salt. Now, this is where we get into it, where they're going to try and say, this is how it could happen, this could happen, but it may not. So, later, Doomcock states, It will be explained that Emperor Palpatine had a room on the second Death Star called the Room of Mirrors. The mirrors were created by the Emperor prior to the Death Star through the dark side using ancient Sith rituals. He continues, These mirrors linked to the Veil of the Force served many purposes. Using them, Palpatine could manipulate the Force in many ways to further his aims. He then provides an example. For example, the use of the mirrors allowed Palpatine to cloud the Jedi Council to conceal himself and his dark apprentices from the Jedi and Force sensitives that followed their trail. Doomcock continues, using the mirrors allowed Palpatine to access the awesome powers of the Veil of the Force. They were indispensable tools that allowed him to rise to the pinnacle of ultimate power. In the Star Wars Rebels episode, A World Between Worlds, Palpatine does appear to have the ability to access what Doomcock describes as the Veil of the Force. 
but he is unable to physically enter the realm like Ezra Bridger and Ashoka Tano. In fact, he attempts to physically enter the Veil of the Force by using some kind of force fire whip that tethers him to Bridger. Ahsoka eventually cuts her tether and prevents Palpatine from entering the realm. Doomcock then details that this is how Palpatine survived the destruction of the Darth Star, sorry, the Death Star, not Darth Star, in Return of the Jedi. It is this conceit that explains how Palpatine survived Darth Vader throwing him down the shaft in the throne room of the Death Star. In desperation as he fell, Palpatine opened a portal to the Veil of the Force and entered it. This explains why Palpatine is in such a damaged state in The Rise of Skywalker, as transporting himself into the Veil without the aid of the mirrors drained him and damaged him severely. He then details that a separate room of mirrors had also been built on Exegol. Now fortunately for the erstwhile Emperor, Palpatine had another room of mirrors installed on Exegol. Palpatine was able to leave the Veil of the Force using the mirrors on Exegol to transport himself there to begin scheming to rise of the new empire and his return to glory, albeit in his grievously damaged state. This is somewhat different explanation from what is provided in the Rise of Skywalker novelization. In the novelization, detailed in the video below, Palpatine calls on the dark power of the Force to thrust his consciousness far, far away to a secret place he had been preparing. It goes on to note his body was dead, an empty vessel, long before it found the bottom of the shaft, and his mind jolted to new awareness and new body, a painful one, a temporary one. That body was the body of a clone. Nevertheless, Doomcock then explains how this information will be used to nullify the sequel trilogy. Remember, the Veil of the Force is a mystical dimension where in all times collide, so all someone has to do to erase all of this timelines and consign it to his own alternate timeline forever is to go into the Veil and wait for Palpatine to enter. Palpatine goes into the Veil and never gets back to Exegol. He is prevented from using the mirrors to return. He dies as he was intended to, and Bob's your uncle, all our problems are solved. He added, that's right, my friends, the solution is essentially Disney hitting Harvey Cthulhu's button and destroying the Kennedy verse. He elaborates Palpatine does not survive the Death Star after all. He is either prevented from opening the portal from inside the veil, or he is prevented from returning to Exegol once he enters the veil, helpless, drained, and dying. And obviously, we got the return of the Jedi. Literally, he says here that he's gone and he's dead. Later, Doomcock asks, Now, is there any proof of any of this? The proof may well be hidden within the Rise of the Skywalker itself, although I'm not convinced Jar Jar Abrams understood the significance of this scene, even as he filmed it. It's unclear if what I'm about to mention was planted in Rise of Skywalker in preparation of destroying the sequel trilogy, or if it is being retconned to facilitate rebooting the Star Wars universe. But regardless, I think this scene amply demonstrates the plausibility of this rumour. He then details the scene. So, in The Rise of Skywalker, when Rey goes into the ruins of the Death Star seeking the Sith Holocron, and more importantly, some semblance of coherence in the plot, she discovers a secret room just off the throne room where Luke famously declared himself a Jedi like his father before him. Doomcock explains... And as you can see here, it is covered with broken mirrors. Shortly after Rey retrieves the Sith holocron, she catches a glimpse of movement in one of the intact mirrors. She turns and confronts an alternate version of herself, a dark Rey with a Swish Army lightsaber. He elaborates, this evil twin actually emerges from the mirror and engages Rey in battle. Well, my friends, this is your glimpse into the Veil of the Force. Literally, anything is possible here as branching alternate realities converge and diverge in that mystical dimension. Doomcock concludes, What is glimpsed in those mirrors is an alternate version of Rey, and lurking within the veil are alternate versions of Palpatine, Luke, and Han. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do we think of that? Because to be honest with you, if that does happen... I'd be, I'd be very happy with that. I'd be ecstatic, to be honest with you, because The Last Jedi, they just kind of let Ryan Johnson go off on his own and do what he wanted, which kind of ruined what was set out by J.J. Abrams. And it's kind of sad, because 
JJ, in my eyes, he should have directed the entire trilogy. They should never have gone with different directors each time, because obviously, when you bring in directors who write their own movies, and obviously you had JJ, who wrote and directed the first one, Rian done the second two, and then obviously, for the third one, it was meant to be Colin Tetravaro, I do, I'm saying his name right, if I'm not, I do apologise, and he wrote, which we have seen, some absolutely gorgeous and fantastic concept art from his script, Jewel of the Fates, which I think would have blown us all out of the water and made it be like, right, this is it. But obviously, the second one, Last Jedi, kind of ruined it all for a lot of people, and a lot of people were like, yeah, I'm not going to go see the new Star Wars. I don't want to watch that. Ryan Johnson, or Rian, whatever his name is, he has completely ruined it. Which, in my eyes, he did. But you do have a lot of people who are saying, oh, he's amazing, it's the best of the trilogy. To me, it's not. The best one is The Force Awakens, sadly, and out of the new Star Wars films, Rogue One blows them all out of the water. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future updates, and I'll see all you wonderful people soon.